G'day, g'day. Welcome to episode five of Bitopia University's weekly discussions. On today's episode, I have some very exciting and uh, valuable information to discuss and address. I hope wherever you are, uh, you're doing well and looking after yourself and not letting into the many distractions that currently exist. So if you're new to these videos, uh, these have been going on. This is the fifth episode and uh, you can go back and look up the other videos that are currently on YouTube and soon to be, other, to be on other decentralized platforms. You can find us on bitopia.org. That's our website and uh, that's where you can subscribe to our newsletters to keep updated with our progress. It's where you can pre-enroll uh, for Bitopia University and uh, something to mention Bitopia University isn't just about Bitcoin cryptocurrencies and blockchain it will be expanding into a variety of different courses so if there's a course that you're currently teaching and there's a lot more online courses currently due to the circumstances that exist reach out to us we can give you the framework and uh, there's a lot more uh, behind the scenes with Bitopia so it's not just an online course, it's a whole framework to reward students and uh, reward teachers and contributors and collaborators. And it's a decentralized platform, meaning that it has no jurisdiction and uh, it exists purely on the internet for many, many different reasons. Our social media channels are listed at the bottom of the website. That's where you can reach out to us. Our Telegram channel is also there. Telegram is similar to uh, WhatsApp, though it's not a proprietary software. Uh, it's open source, meaning that you can see the code. It's like you can see the recipe. Uh, you know what's in it if you can read the code. And at the same time, it's not owned by Facebook, which I think is a huge thumbs up. Overall, that's our website, those are our channels. Uh, if you don't want to download Telegram and you want to participate in discussions, you can go to campus.bitopia.org. Uh, you don't have to sign in if you want to just read what's going on in the community. Though if you do want to discuss things or if you have thoughts you want to share, if you want to collaborate, uh, you can sign in using the various channels that we have there. So you can use your social media channels, for example, LinkedIn, GitHub, etc. And this platform runs on Rocket Chat, which again is a open source platform. Uh, so you can always download the uh, app for that platform and use it on your mobile phone as well. That's for the introduction. And now for this week's topic. One of our community members reached out and posted a, a link to uh, his website, bitcointipsandtricks.wordpress.com. Be sure to check it out. Some interesting information on there, obviously in representation of Paralini Police. Paralini Police is an organization that I would uh, say is one of the highest level of uh, as far as information, principles, and implementation of uh, open source principles and community and uh, respecting privacy, security, these kind of things. I have never been to a location or an event organized uh, that can match the caliber of what Paralini Police and their events and their overall presence have been able to achieve. And uh, I've had the privilege of being able to speak at that at their events which is hosted yearly in October uh, for the past five years and hopefully if things get a bit better I can go again for the sixth year. So on this website uh, I saw a, an article which I found quite interesting cryptocurrency wallet versus exchange. This is quite important if you are a cryptocurrency user uh, whether you're you know using it to just save or you're using it on a regular basis or you're just trading. This is something that many people are surprised to find out. 
because we come from the traditional system, which is that you keep your money at the bank or you use the stock exchange. In either case, you're using a third party. So you have passed on some of your freedom to another organization in exchange for the security they offer you. And uh, what many people fail to recognize is that with Bitcoin or with cryptocurrencies that are decentralized, uh, you don't need to do that. The huge positive benefit that comes with cryptocurrencies uh, whether it's Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies that are decentralized, is that you are your own bank. That's self-sovereign money. And once you understand the benefits of that, you will understand what this article and what this topic is about. So I will dive into it a bit more. Um, so I've written on this whiteboard, which my brother was uh, kind enough to donate for Bitopia's uh, progress. So thank you. And uh, it makes explaining a lot easier, especially if you're doing courses or uh, you're consulting or you're teaching people to just write down the ideas so you know they can understand it better. So on there I have written non-custodial and custodial. So that's very important to note. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Uh, what's important though are those two words, custodial, non-custodial. In the case of Bitcoin, we'll just use that as an example, though this applies to all decentralized cryptocurrencies. In the case of Bitcoin, uh, you are given what is referred to a private key. This private key gives you ownership over the account that may hold Bitcoin in it. If you have used Bitcoin in the past, uh, you would have had to deal with either a wallet or an exchange. To summarize it in a quick format, it means that if you dealt with an exchange, uh, you would have registered with an email address, your name, and you would have probably done your KYC, which is like, uh, send them your driver's license, perhaps a photo of yourself with the date and your license in your hand, things like this to prove who you are, uh, so you can purchase uh, these cryptocurrencies from the exchange. Now, with a wallet, uh, depending on what wallet you have used, uh, you may have gone through a similar thing, though uh, most probably you didn't. You most probably either used an email address to register, or if you knew about the situation, you would have used a non-custodial wallet, and you would have written down your... Uh, 24 words. What do these things mean? What is the difference between a custodial wallet and a non-custodial wallet? This is something that I really find important to discuss with people. A custodial wallet would be your Coinbase, it would be a Kraken, it would be a Bitfenix, it would be your Binance, Coinjar if you're in Australia, and the other ones globally, people know what they are. We use Coinbase, for example. Coinbase for me is an interesting one because when I was in Amsterdam, I was uh, invited to go in, to an event where uh, Coinbase's product manager came out and spoke. And they put a lot of emphasis as to why decentralization is important, the negative impacts of centralization on society, on organizations, hacks that come with it. So centralization would be, for example, Uber or Dropbox. That's centralized, meaning that you log in with your email address, but in the case of Dropbox, they hold the files for you and uh, promise to keep it safe. The issue, however, is when you have a centralized organization, you have a central point of failure meaning that, and this is backed by events that have occurred, uh, someone can access that system, retrieve the files, and uh, distribute those files. So Uber has been hacked, Dropbox has been hacked, many other centralized organizations have been hacked, meaning that your personal information and data uh, have been leaked and uh, distributed on the internet. 
Now this isn't very good, uh, though this is the price we pay for convenience because no one wants to keep the files themselves, they enjoy having everything on the cloud, uh, so you log in with your email address, etc. Uh, and the consequence of such a convenience is that if it does get hacked, uh, your privacy or your security is at risk. The same thing applies to Bitcoin. Uh, you can leave your coins on Coinbase and uh, you can risk, I mean, you know, people can say, oh, I trust Exchange X, which is, you know, something that I found interesting because a lot of people do say that a lot, but I trust Exchange XY. The history has shown that the most damaging events that have occurred involving Bitcoin have been due to centralized exchanges being hacked. Now you can go all the way back to 2014 and you can come all the way forward to 2020 and go through the billions and billions of dollars that were hacked. Um, you know, you can name organizations like Main Gox, uh, where huge amounts of money uh, were taken from the exchange. And other exchanges that have just simply said, oh, we've been hacked or just disappear with people's money. And these things create a negative reputation for Bitcoin. Though it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's just the way that people have kept their money on a centralized exchange due to convenience or due to not knowing how else to deal with it. And this is part of Bitopia University's uh, course on decentralization where we will discuss security on how to keep your Bitcoin safe in a wallet that you control and how to keep your words safe, what are some of the uh, benefits to it and uh, what are some parameters that you can keep in mind to better deal with that and uh, empower yourself with that freedom and that level of security. And it's not that difficult. And if you're dealing with money and I don't think there's anyone out there that wants to lose their money. If you're dealing with money, this is a way to uh, kind of learn and educate yourself and learn how to be your own bank, which is, you know, the 101 of why Bitcoin is so powerful. So the thing that I tell people is that it's fine. It's, it's fine if you want to keep it on an exchange, if you're trading. If you're trading hourly, if you're trading on a daily basis, that's fine. Like, it doesn't make sense to... Uh, keep sending it back and forward, but just keep enough on the exchange that your uh, the amount that you're using to ex deal or trade with. Uh, there's no need to treat an exchange as a bank and keep your currency there. So I know a lot of individuals who uh, leave their coin on Coinbase or other platforms. And that's not a good security standard. Uh, the industry standard for Bitcoin would say that if you don't own your private key, th now whether that's the 24 words or the actual private key, uh, you don't own your Bitcoin. And owning your own Bitcoin comes with a lot more benefits that we can also discuss during the course. So in short, a custodial wallet is similar to that of Coinbase, where you log in with an email or password, um, they hold it on your behalf, and uh, you know, you, you're passing that power to them. A non-custodial wallet is something like Samurai Wallet, which says you know, on their website, fully non-custodial software ensures you are always in control of your private keys. No email address, no ID checks, and no hassle. Just install and go. Another great example is Wasabi Wallet. Wasabi is an open source, non-custodial, privacy-focused Bitcoin wallet for desktop that implements trustless coin shuffling with mathematically provable anonymity. Now, if you're not into the anonymity, that's fine. Uh, though these wallets are top of the line when it comes to non-custodial wallets. Samurai Wallet is a bit more advanced and we offer that in our advanced course once you have a better understanding. Uh, because it can be a bit tricky. They are Bitcoin maximalists, so it doesn't uh, indicate the price of Bitcoin. You can't put in US dollars. It just uh, does everything in Bitcoin, uh, which can be challenging at times.
Wasabi I have not personally used, uh, though uh, it is recommended by very knowledgeable people. And those are the two that I've kind of uh, represented here. And you can find a lot of non-custodial wallets. So if you want to know more about this, reach out to us and we'll be sure to guide you through it. And uh, this is an important thing to realize. So if you're not trading on a daily basis, my recommendation to you is do not keep your Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies on an exchange. Um, history has shown that they can disappear, they can be hacked. Any system can be hacked, uh, even more so centralized system. And uh, that's we can, where we can leave that topic. Interesting article, check it out. And uh, you can read a bit more about why they're important. Though the best wallets are hardware wallets, uh, which would be your Trezor and all of that. Though I will discuss those kind of wallets in another episode and uh, I'll leave it there for you for today. So if you don't own your private key, you don't own your Bitcoin. If an exchange gets hacked, it's not Bitcoin's fault. It's that you didn't understand the parameters correctly and that uh, you didn't take advantage of the empowerment that was given to you by a decentralized cryptocurrencies in which you can be your own bank. Moving on from uh, custodial versus non-custodial wallets, I want to introduce you to Voltoro. Voltoro uh, started by Joshua. I met him some time ago uh, in Prague and also in Berlin. Great guy. A big fan of precious metals. That's why I started this website and this organization. Voltara is a place where you can exchange Bitcoin for gold. And this is a huge benefit for people that at times when Bitcoin can be volatile, uh, they want to move away from Bitcoin and digital cryptocurrencies uh, and go into something a bit more stable. So this is a great way to do that without using what is referred to as a stable coin, which is backed or pegged to the US dollar. And, uh, you know, I've had conversations with Joshua many times where, you know, he has indicated that if a person, for example, in the US, they wanted their gold that was uh, held by Voltora and they, you know, uh, requested for that amount to be sent to them, Obviously, they have uh, acknowledged that request and sent the physical gold to that person. And that is a great thing to note here. And uh, it also means that you're dealing with a complete system that is stateless. So it's stateless reserve. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with uh, decentralized cryptocurrencies and precious metals, you're not dealing with fiat currencies and... Uh, that in itself is a huge bonus for a lot of people. You can check them out. Great service, great people working on it. And, uh, you know, very transparent. And you can reach out to them if you have any particular questions or queries. Uh, I'm not associated with them at all. Uh, I just thought to bring this up because a lot of people don't know about such things. Okay, so another topic that I wanted to discuss was uh, the bail-in. Bail-in is something that has been introduced in Australia and in Europe as far as I know. Especially with the circumstances that are occurring now, this is something that people should note. A bail-in means that if there was another event like 2008, which if you're looking at what's going on at the moment, I'm sure you'll come to realize this is a lot bigger than 2008. It means that if there is another event like that, it, instead of a bailout, which is that uh, taxpayers' money is used to bail out organizations, uh, bail-in is taking your deposits. So the money that's in the bank in the form of a deposit can be taken out and uh, used to rescue organizations that are too big to fail, which is what they refer to. And you can see a particular text from this one. So this is from the European Union. That's the link. This is not a um, matter of opinion. This is a legal document. You can read it. Uh, I'll include the link at the bottom of this video. 
During a transitional period, depositors should have access to an appropriate amount of their covered deposits to cover the cost of living. That's very nice of them. So once your money's been taken out, they'll leave it after so you can cover the cost of living. It's your money. So this is again, this would be like a custodial uh, situation where they have hold, hold uh, or control of your money. And uh, once the situation has occurred, they will dictate, they being the banks or organizations that have uh, control of your funds, dictate how and when you can use it. A non-custodial wallet in terms of digital cryptocurrencies is empowering because you are your own bank. And uh, whether it's on a USB stick, whether it's like on a file somewhere, whether hopefully offline, and uh, which would be a cold wallet, we call it or a hardware wallet, uh, you simply just deal with the situation very differently. You have full control over your funds and they can go with you wherever uh, you please. I'll leave it there for today. I'm trying to keep it a bit more uh, compact so that more viewers can uh, get value out of the videos. And if you have any questions, you want things to be discussed for future episodes, do reach out uh, via campus.bitopia.org, via telegram group, bitopia underscore you, or send us an email, info at bitopia.org, and we'd love to hear your feedback, whether you have comments or you want to collaborate or contribute, that's the way to do it. And uh, to leave it off, I recently did an interview with Paolini Police. You can go check it out. I'll put the link in the description panel. So due to the circumstances that are occurring, obviously the physical location within the city of Prague uh, has had to close. So they're doing the online uh, interviews to still address topics, inform people, and uh, yeah, reach out to people. So I had a conversation with them on May 15th and it was really great, check it out. And also if you're looking to support some organizations, as I said, I have never been to a crypto event uh, that can match the caliber of what Paralini Police is doing. And also everything they do as an organization is open source, which means that you can replicate their model and do the same thing in your own city, wherever you are. And that is huge. Uh, so tr comparing that to the traditional proprietary model, franchise model, where you pay you know, a certain amount, it can be like $20,000 just for the licensing, and then on top, all the expenses that come with the location, etc. cetera, um, in an open source environment, you don't have that. They have given you all that they have worked to put together uh, on the platter for you to go and take and do as you wish with it. So they have another location in uh, Bratislava and there were a few other locations popping up though again due to circumstances many are paused and uh, yeah there you go. Check it out, reach out and uh, show your support to Paralini Police if you can. Uh, a lot of these principles were established by them and the uh, great people that work on that uh, project. Cheers, take care, enjoy your weekend. Uh, until next time.